Hi, it's Sean from the Commander's Brew. This is Marty Enchantments with Gen. And you know I love a spicy brew around here, so let's make Zerda our companion. Now all of our enchantments need to have activated abilities, but we'll be able to activate them cheaper. This is gonna be a brew. I've got some fun finds for you veteran brewers, and if you're new to making decks, here's a look at my process. I'm not gonna give you a deck. I'm gonna teach you to deck. But first I gotta do some business, and I'll make it quick, I promise. A like and subscribe goes a long way, I'd appreciate that. If you want to check out the cards I talked about, you can click the TCG player link below. Anything you get there helps out too. Or more directly at patreon.com slash commandersbrew. Find out how to get in on the Discord and help with these cool group brews. And I've got a coupon code for money off your magic singles for my fellow Canadian viewers from the Wizard's Tower. I'm almost done. Thanks for watching. Here's two ads, a fake one and a real one. Do you ever cook? then you know that having the perfect tool for the job is essential. Well, you'll need the Dark Steel Kitchen Tool. It doesn't slice, it doesn't dice, it only does one thing, but if you know what that job is, you'll love it. Trust us. Sheoldred knows what I'm talking about. Am I right, Sheoldred? It's worth it. I think Gordon Ramsay has one of these. You should get one. And now the real ad from the Wizard's Tower, wizardtower.com. They've got all your article and cool deck tech needs over at wizardtower.com. And if you visit their store as a Canadian viewer, you can get a discount code, BREWUNITED, to get 5% off all your magic singles if you spend $20 or more. That's a very versatile coupon. And now back to the show. Okay, now for the good stuff. Let's start with Zerta. What about Zerta? Putting Zerta in our command zone means we have to make sure our permanents have activated abilities. That's the rule. Lands are going to be fine. Mana rocks are all good. Equipment and vehicles are also good. Equip and crew are both activated abilities. Basically anything with a colon. We've really got to be careful picking creatures and enchantments. And there's a weird thing going on if you look for a colon on Scryfall or something. There's a lot of auras that are enchantments that grant a tap ability, but it's not actually on the card itself. Dragon Mantle, for example, doesn't have the colon on the enchantment, but Fire Breathing does. Weird, huh? And of course, all instants and sorceries are fair game. Now let's talk again. We've got an activated ability to swap an enchantment on the board with one in the yard. So keeping in mind Zerda's restriction, we'll want some enchantments we actually want to sack and we'll want them to be cheap. The omen cycle is just about perfect because once it enters the battlefield we've kind of gotten everything we want out of it. Same with a card like Bitter Reunion. We get to improve our hand a little bit and then it's ready to get sacked. And we'll definitely want some bigger enchantments that we hope to bring back from the graveyard. Ethereal Absolution. Pump the team. Make some spirits. And Suicidal Charge is interesting. It shrinks our opponent's creatures even further but the best part is it can sack itself. That means we can get it back with Gen one more time. Having restrictions on a brew does force you to get creative and oh boy, we got creative with this one. I'm going to start with the dessert. Here's a few cards that seem especially cool in a deck like this. I'm not entirely sure how to categorize stuff like this anyway, so here's a couple. Brash Taunter is fantastic. Making that ability cost one is fantastic for Zerda and it pairs very nicely with General's Regalia. Again, with Zerda, we only have to pay one and then the next source gets dealt to Brash Taunter, thus putting it anywhere we want. And again, I keep forgetting that a card like Pariah can't be run here because there's no activated ability. But Pariah's shield's okay too if you want to hook that up to the Brash Taunter. All the classes are fine too because they all have activated abilities to level them up. Fighter class brings in a free piece of equipment into our hand. I'm thinking Battle Mage's Bracers. I'd like to equip it to Gen and then get double dips on those sacrificing enchantments to bring enchantments back. And then for a bit of redundancy, I'm probably just going to run Sunforger. I've got a few more neat moves for you later, but they'll make more sense once we go over a few other cards. The restriction to have activated abilities means finding enchantments that we're happy to sacrifice wasn't easy. But here's a few. There's just not many enchantments that actually do something upon entering that also have activated abilities. So I've got to look a little bit harder. Omen of the Dead is an easy one as I mentioned before. Same thing with Omen of the Sun. Once either of those cards hits the battlefield, they've basically done their job. So I'm happy to sacrifice them with Gen. And then I thought about the Genju cycle. They all cost a single mana and have to enchant a land of the basic type of their color. And they're basically just in here to be super cheap enchantments that we can sacrifice to Gen. In a pinch, we can animate them, but I should warn you that if the creature dies, the land is the thing that dies. This enchantment comes back to your hand. And another super cheap enchantment is Dockside Chef. Enchantment creatures count too. One mana to drop it in. One mana to sack an artifact or creature to draw a card if we've got Zerda out. If we've got a lot of tokens lying around, 
that's going to be a ton of cheap card draw. Or we just block with Dockside Chef, sack it with Gen before combat damage. Quick little chump. Nothing personal, Chef. Your food's great. Now finding enchantments that sacrifice themselves is also important because we need stuff in the graveyard if we want to be bringing it back. Luckily anything that can sacrifice itself will automatically have an activated ability. That's how that works. Seal of Doom, Seal of Cleansing, here's a couple pieces of removal that we can get back if we need to to deal with a problem permanent. I'll say it of Life's Bounty is a nice piece of protection for Gen or Zerda should we need it. Vessel of Ephemera. It comes down pretty cheap and especially with Zerda we can sacrifice it for super cheap to get two 1-1 one -one spirits. Vessel of Volatility is kind of the same thing only now we're getting some real ramp. It's just one if you do everything all at once but Ramps ramp. And as I mentioned before, Suicidal Charge is one of those expensive enchantments that sacrifices itself, so when we get that one back, we're saving on mana. These are some useful abilities that we might want to get back, even if it's at a little bit of a mana cost inefficiency. And the other way to get cards in our graveyard is mill. Enchantments that mill are ideal, but I did have to dip outside of enchantments a little bit. Lorehold Excavation is a nice enchantment that mills us one every turn. We get a little bit of extra value from those cards milled, but the main reason this is in here is so we can keep flipping cards over, and eventually we can sack this to get back the cool thing that it flipped over. Heretic's Punishment is just about the ideal enchantment for the deck. With Zerta on board, we can activate the ability for just two mana. We get to mill some cards, and we get to do some damage to a creature or player. Our average CMC isn't that high, so I don't predict we'll be able to close out a game this way, but that'd be a nice last ditch thing to try. We can freely run any sort of sorcery like Atrocious Experiment, card draw with a bit of mill stapled onto it, Milliken is a little mana rock that also taps to add colorless while milling cards for us. They write it like the milling a card is the cost, but that's kind of the benefit. Codex Shredder is a similar thing in that we get to basically mill one card every turn for quote unquote free. And there's the added benefit that if Gen gets dealt with too many times, we can get something cool back using this instead. Perpetual Timepiece is a pretty pretty strong card considering you get to mill yourself for two cards without ever doing anything. You just gotta tap it every turn. And I have used the other ability to save something in my graveyard from getting exiled. So there's that. Altar of Dementia might be the classic mill card. Got a board full of creatures? Well, now you can mill yourself a bunch if you want. Heck, if that board gets wide enough, you can mill someone else right out of the game. But we do need to keep our eyes on enchantments. As tempting as it would be to stuff this thing full of artifacts. We're almost done the core parts of the deck, and before I get to some of the cool paths we could go down, I want to talk about some protection for Gen and Zerda since they're so important to our game plan. Luckily, there's a lot within the enchantment card type. Flicker form works best when Zerda's on the battlefield so that for white white we can blink someone to save them from some sort of removal spell. It even works in response to a board wipe because we get to come back at the end step. The only trouble is we gotta make sure we have nothing we need to do with those creatures in the meantime because they'll be gone. Blessing of Leeches is one of those cards that grants regeneration, but it does it the way that we're allowed to do. The enchantment is doing the regeneration. It's not granting the ability to the creature. I don't think that one life per turn would be too much of a payment. Flash is great, and it's a free ability. Dark Privilege comes down a little bit cheaper. Doesn't have Flash, but now we get to regenerate it quote unquote for free as long as we have a creature to sacrifice. And then something like Etchings of the Chosen. At first you might think it's asking you to choose the creature you want to save, but that's not it. You choose the creature you have the most of, and then you can sacrifice one of them to save a different creature. You don't have to pick human to be able to save Gen. There is an awful lot of sacrificing creatures coming up. I think we gotta look into making tokens. A go-wide strategy is not only appealing because of all those enchantments that ask us to sacrifice creatures, it's also a way we can win. Don't forget about your win cons. And we can actually make quite a few tokens using enchantments. Not only do we have a ton of options for making tokens with enchantments, with Zerta on the battlefield, they get really, really cheap. Mobilization allows us to pay a single white with Zerta on the battlefield to make a 1-1 white soldier creature token. Dawn of Hope ends up costing two per token, but they've got lifelink. Mastery of the Unseen technically doesn't make tokens, but for two mana we can manifest a card, which is a 2-2, two -two, which is better than the average 1-1. One -one. I'm not sure how likely it is that we'll be able to flip it face up, but it's fun to keep your opponents guessing. And although they're not an enchantment, Prava of the Steel Legion is pretty nice because it as well can pump out soldiers for two mana with Zerda around. And also when it's our turn, our tokens are a little bit bigger. And that's all soldiers. Goblin Warrens, again, with Zerda on the battlefield, we're paying a single red to get a net gain of one goblin. We just gotta have two to start it. Goblin Trenches is exciting because sacrificing a land is a hefty cost, but 
if we get to pay a single mana, then it's like every land equals two goblin soldier creature tokens. That's going to be a pretty big board if we want to pull that trigger. And at that point, Siege Gang Commander becomes awesome. Not only does it bring in a bunch of goblins, but with Zerda, we're paying a single red to fling two damage anywhere. And of course, Pashalik Mons, very similar to Goblin Warrens with that ability costs us two we're still going up one goblin but now we're doing a lot of damage everywhere this token angle really does seem like the deepest well to draw from i highlighted enough cool goblin cards that we might be able to do this deck as an entire goblin tribal thing i'm not gonna go super deep on that myself but you're gonna run hobgoblin bandit lord that's an anthem for all your goblins plus if we're making them boatloads at a time that's some serious damage mad auntie is another anthem for our goblins with a little bit of regeneration for those key pieces and of course krenko mob boss this card just gets out of control and if we're going that way we should probably run something like a staff of domination so we can untap krenko a few times to just make a billion goblins then of course we want something like hammer of perforos which does happen to be an enchantment and it gives the whole team Team haste. I'll come back to etchings of the chosen for a second only this time we're gonna pick goblin for sure so it's an anthem for the team and it gives goblins indestructible if we want and at that point if you've got the money I think you need an aggravated assault. Think of this with Zerda. Paying three mana for this effect is incredible especially if you've got an army full of goblins. I'm gonna put a pin in this goblin idea and come back to the other deck we were working on but I do like the idea of adding a color or two to an otherwise monocolored tribal deck. Okay here's a card that I've never heard of before that seems excellent in any token deck with red in it. Last Ditch Effort. It only costs one mana and it's instant. That's about the best price and effect you can get on a spell. You sacrifice X creatures to do X damage to any target. It's great board wipe insurance. This is a way to possibly finish the game if you've got someone to around 10 life. And if you've got a real problem with a planeswalker or a creature that's keeping you down, you probably don't have to sacrifice too much to take care of it. Seems pretty good. So if our plan is to make a bunch of tokens, what are some ways we can support them? So let's look at some ways to make our token army more potent. This is not a cheap card, but Perforos, God of the Forge, is a classic for this type of effect. We can win the game just by making a bunch of tokens, but if that weren't enough, we can also pump them up for a single red if Zerda's on the battlefield. Ethereal Absolution, as I mentioned earlier, is another enchantment that pumps up the team while making our opponent's team a little smaller. Quest for Pure Flame is really interesting. Depending on how you go, it might be either super easy to get four counters on this thing or we might have to work too hard to make it worth it. But if this makes any sense in the deck, having this ready to go for the turn we want to swing out with our huge army is powerful. Prosperous Partnership is another fun enchantment that works great with Gen synergies, brings in a couple of tokens, and has that activated ability to ramp us with treasure. Paladin Class is another class that, as I said before, definitely has an activated ability. I'm a big fan of the first ability, but if we get it up to level 2 for just another white mana, that's our anthem. And if we've had Zerda out, we can level this thing up to the max for 5 total mana. I imagine our army will be fairly wide, so whatever this token is that's a attacking for massive damage with double strike that's gonna be brutal we gotta give it trample then a creature like Jazal Goldbane again this activated ability gets very reasonable if we've got Zerda on the battlefield to the point where I might just activate it twice and give my whole army plus x plus x times two and similarly steadfast unicorn comes down for a single mana and again with Zerda we just pay two to give the whole team plus one plus one and vigilance. It has to be our turn, but that's pretty cheap. And I've saved the best for last with Cavalier of Flame. Not only does it pump the team, it also covers the haste. And that enter the battlefield ability that allows us to discard a couple of cards could serve Gen's ability very nicely. I feel like there's some really explosive turn potential in this deck. Cavalier of Flame makes me think of one of my favorite enchantments of all time in red, and it's legal with Zerda. Tectonic Reformation. I hate getting stuck with tons of lands late game, so being able to cycle them for value is excellent. It comes down cheap. If I don't think I'll need it for a while, I can sacrifice it again if I have to. And it itself cycles for one with Zerta out. And it's especially interesting because it gives other cards cycling your lands that wouldn't otherwise have it. So then I think it makes sense to run Archfiend of If Near. If we get this first, we don't have much of a use for it, so we just cycle it. But if we draw this after Tectonic Reformation, it can do serious work. The whole Zerta cycling thing is another angle we could go down. There's just too many options though. Brewing decks is so fun. 
So this is the last part of the show, the scraps. These are a handful of cards that I think are super neat for the deck, but I just couldn't figure out where to talk about them earlier. So if we've got access to Zerda, we can get some super cheap repeatable effects. Here's some of my favorites. Theater of Horrors is a nice way to just accrue some card advantage just waiting for an opponent to take some damage, and being able to do that damage for two is very nice. Soul Bright Flamekin. Activating this ability three times only costs us three, and it pays us back with eight, so we're up five. And something like Scholar of Athreos turns every black mana we can spend to us draining the entire table and we gain the full life. This is the good version. Each opponent loses one and we gain all of it. And if that doesn't make you think of Vito Thorn of the Dust Grows, I don't know what does. These two together probably wins you the game, but just in case it doesn't, this activated ability will probably put you over the top. Then there's a card like Evra Halcyon Witness. This is a really peculiar one that I'd love to play with more. All too often you want to exchange your life total twice. Once to make Evra massive, get that lifelink damage while your life's low, and then maybe again to swap back if something happens. Doing so for two seems reasonable. And check out Glory. I've never heard of this card, but with Zerta we can pay a single white to give our whole team protection from a color. Except for artifact creatures, we're basically able to get through anybody's board, and it'll probably cost us two or three mana at tops. Well, Xanthus Sleeper Agent's a pretty nice one. The way Zerta is worded, whenever we activate an ability, we pay less. We don't have to control the thing. We don't even have to own it. But this is another way we, we can draw a card for one mana while making an opponent lose two life every time we do. Brutal. I guess the last question is how do I fit all of these into a deck? You made it to the end. Thanks for watching. And of course, you keep being you. The world is a better place for it. I'll see you next time. If you like this deck, here's another one you might like. It's another Mardu Enchantments deck, but this one's all about attack. And our old pal Gen shows up here too. Gen, you love enchantments more than any other Mardu. You're great.